Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rise. We're back here at Walker Ford, Clearwater, Florida. And guess what? I have that one Japanese brand that really has been known about all wheel drive performance. And it's this vehicle right here. What is it? It's a 2024 Subaru Outback Wilderness Edition. But before we get into this lifted wagon that's got some off-road credentials, let's talk about what's going on here. Subaru, they first were sold here in North America all the way back in the 1960s. Fast forward to today, a lot has changed in the auto industry and guess what? A lot has changed with Subaru. They still make the mighty WRX, but unfortunately the STI is basically part of their past now, no longer being produ produced. But what's fascinating is, is that this car company that once had some really quirky vehicles has fallen into perfect alignment with what the auto industry has done. The lifted wagon, known as the Outback, the Forester, known as their compact crossover SUV, now they have the Crosstrek and the Ascent. They really have built a strong lineup for what people desire in today's auto market. Now what's fascinating is, it used to be about taking performance and bringing it to the WRX and that whole lineup of different series, but now it's about taking the Outback, the Forester, and the Crosstrek and making them more performance oriented for the off-road arena. So what I wanna find out is if you're looking for a new vehicle that basically does it all, it's the Swiss army knife of all vehicles, is this lifted wagon. A lot of people still think it's an SUV. It's not an SUV, this lifted wagon. Does the Outback Wilderness bring what you want for the money? Let's go ahead, let's dive into this one and find out. Right off the bat, the color. This metallic green fits the Outback perfectly. And I'll be honest with you, people come up to me, they say, Joe, Forrester, Outback, which way are you gonna go? I've always liked the Outback better than the Forrester, but what's cool is, is now you can get Wilderness Editions in either one of those, plus the smaller Crosstrek. But the green is just banging on the front of this Subaru. When we look at the front end of the business, what do we got going on? You're gonna have full LED daytime running lamps and active adaptive headlights. That means that they're gonna move with the steering. The one thing that's a bit of a zonk is you have Old Man River in there with the old Thomas Edison light bulb. So it would have been nice if this whole thing was full LED. Working our way down, we have a lot of cladding, but on the Wilderness Edition, it looks good. I just wish they wouldn't have done this fake vent area. There had to be something else design-wise, maybe just smooth it out, but to put a large fake vent, not really my favorite, but here's a little fun fact I wanna tell you about with the headlights. So I remember a few years ago, BMW came out with the what they were known as adaptive headlights, the headlights that would move with the steering wheel. It goes all the way back to the late 1940s with Preston Tucker and his amazing car, a car before its time known as the Tucker that had a headlight in the center that actually moved with the steering wheel. So even though we call this new technology, it's crazy that it's not as new as you think. Now, one of the nice things is, is that you are gonna get these really cool Gatling gun style LED fog lamps. And where these covers are on the front, these gold, metallic gold covers, they pop off and that's where you're gonna have some tow hook locations so that you can pull those lesser vehicles, maybe like a Jeep Compass Trailhawk out of the mud because this would be a direct competitor against the Jeep Compass Trailhawk. And the Trailhawk is their off-road version of the Compass. Now, as we continue across the front, you got that iconic Subaru badge, looking great. I like the way they kept the grill all flat black. And this grill is specific to the Wilderness Edition. You are gonna get a 180 degree forward facing camera. And there's lots of little Easter eggs. This is actually the Rockies. That's where a lot of Subaru owners like to go camping. So they put little Easter egg designs all over the front of this vehicle, but it's nice. 
So important to have a forward-facing camera if you have a trim that's meant more for off-roading. On the lower portion of the grill, full functionality, and then you can get optional skid plates underneath, which this one has, to protect the underside and all the bits as you're going off-roading. Now, the great news is your standard Outback has 8.7 inches of ground clearance. Guess what? Add another 0.8 to that total. 9.5 inches of ground clearance. So this Outback lifted wagon is actually even more lifted than your standard Outback, but the whole front fascia, including the grill, is unique to the Wilderness Edition. Now, as we rise up, I love what they did with the hood. Same exact hood as your standard Outback, but they put an anti-glare strip perfectly in the center, nicely shaped. This really does help cut down on glare that hits when the sunlight hits the hood. It's not gonna bounce and hit you right in your eyes as you're driving. As we come around the bend, what are we working with wheel and tire setup? You're actually gonna get the 17 inch off-road style wheels. Love the nice satin black, simple design with the Yokohama Geolander AT tires. So those off-road terrain tires. So let's think about this. We talked about the credentials. You have the optional skid plates that are available underneath. That definitely is a credential. You have the tow hook locations up front and out back. Those are more of the credentials. The tires are so important and you have the shielding on the side. Now this isn't a rock crawling vehicle, but it's meant to go a little further off the beaten path so you could go ahead and set up your camping site, get the marshmallows out, make some s'mores, maybe roast a Twinkie or two, and then have fun with dogs, of course, because dogs and Subarus go together like peanut butter and jelly. Now, with that extra height, you can see that we have more room for ground, uh, for uh, wheel travel. You have the ability now, because of the redesigned nose and the redesigned rear end, to have a greater approach angle as you approach hills and rocks and things like that and a greater departure angle so that's the nice thing with this and then you do have a little bit more cladding on the side of the vehicle to protect the shiny bits that are underneath it now as we come down the side you'll notice that we have it may look like flat black it's not it's actually a gray finish on the mirror caps with your turn singles i like the way they place the subaru wilderness badge with those colorado rockies there and then this particular one has optional rain guards. This is something that I think many Subaru owners put on their vehicle. So it's nice to see that this one has it. And then you'll also notice this unique roof rack. So you have that raised cross rails. Of course, these pop off. You can get tie down locations. You can attach baskets. You could even put a overlanding tent up here because when the vehicle is still, it can handle up to 700 pounds. These rails can handle up to 700 pounds. When the vehicle is moving, it's 220 pounds. But this really, like I said, is that vehicle to go off the beaten path and do some overlanding, and you could sleep in a tent right up top. Steven has done it many times. He is an expert person with tents. Give him a call. He'll actually help you set up your tent at your next camping site or if you go to a music festival of, of some type. Now on the bottom, you do get just a little bit more cladding, but I like how you still get the Outback name with the gold. And that's another thing. I remember the days when Subaru was all about World Rally Blue and gold BBS wheels. It's nice to see a little gold back on a Subaru. Working your way towards the rear, I like the way these look really sturdy because think about 700 pounds, that's a lot. That's a lot of Twinkies you could put on top of this thing. And then coming around back, you are gonna get a nice long roof spoiler. You do have a flat black shark fin antenna up top. You do have the wiper. I am gonna zonk it. It would be nice to get this just out of here, especially if you are off-roading and maybe a branch comes down. You don't wanna rip this off like a, like a twig. You'll see the LED taillights looking good. And just like up front, like I said, the rear bumper is unique. Ow. That's gonna take a really good beating. You got your Subaru full symmetrical all-wheel drive. So that means all-time all-wheel drive. And then on the passenger side, I like the way they did the black badges with the Outback and of course a Subaru Wilderness badge. And then dropping it like it's hot, 
you got your tow recovery points, and then you'll notice how the exhaust is tucked very high up out of the way because that's going to give you that better departure angle, rear departure angle, and tons of ground clearance. What we're going to do is, after we pop the hood, we're actually going to drive over Steven as he holds the camera just to show you how much ground clearance there is. Hopefully it works, Steven, and I don't drag you through the parking lot. But why don't we go ahead, let's pop the hood and see what's powering this wilderness edition of the Outback. All right, guys, we got the hood popped. Now, what's interesting, out of the other two wilderness edition vehicles, the Forester and the Crosstrek, this one is not naturally aspirated like the other two are. We have turbocharged power, so you're going to have a nice, large, top-mounted intercooler. That's almost like another sign of this being a Subaru, is they always have those top-mounted intercoolers for the turbocharged engine. You can see where the scoop that actually is on the underside of the hood brings cool air to the intercooler. But what do we got going on? We have a 2.4 liter turbocharged engine, 260 horsepower, 277 pound-feet of torque. It is made it to a CVT. That seems to be Subaru's thing. All their vehicles, including the WRX, are fitted with CVTs. Yes, the WRX, you could also get a manual. The one that you don't get a CVT on is a BRZ. Zero to 60 though, 5.7 seconds. It is top speed governed to 117 miles an hour. MPGs 22 in the city, 26 on the highway. The vehicle weighs 3,973 pounds and you could tow up to 3,500 pounds. One of the other things that I like underneath the hood of a Subaru is you get to see everything. I see the intercooler, you see the throttle body, you see the intake plenum, the alternator, the oil filter, the AC compressor. All of it is clearly visible and easily accessible, except for the spark plugs. Spark plugs, you better have little baby hands to get to those on the sides of this flat four engine. But you know what? Why don't we go ahead, let's fire it up and hear what it sounds like. All right, guys, we are inside this 2024 Subaru Outback Wilderness Edition. I know you're saying to yourself, well, Joe, I remember I hated Outbacks. I thought they were so goofy looking, but man, they have grown on me, and I like the changes that Subaru has brought, especially this Wilderness Edition. How much is it? MSRP is right under $40,000. It's like $39,995 for a new Outback Wilderness, when you look at the competition, there's a lot to choose from, but this has some really unique features, not only on the outside, but also on the inside. So let's get to it, see what you get for the money, to the door panels. I like the clean style. You have some gold stitching that they brought from the outside the gold into the interior. You'll notice the light gray with the dark black accents. There is some faux carbon fiber I don't mind it really that much uh, because it doesn't stand out too crazy. The good news is no gloss black. The bad news is the door pockets are a little on the tighter side, so maybe just two Mickey D's cheeseburgers and a Pepsi to wash it down. We got the Harman Kardon sound system, which is nice. And then going from the door panel to the dash, there's more of that stitching. That's consistent, the two-tone. This is actually a, a darker gray compared to the black. We have our Wilderness Edition Twinkie tray, a baker's dozen of Twinkies. Even the way they did the material in here, very nicely done with the stitching. You come on in, what do you get? You get that 11.6 inch portrait style infotainment system. It's got full navigation, all touchscreen capability, the Starlink, the whole setup with all the different apps. You even have a separate screen up top that you could toggle through with gauge information. You could change your widgets. If you ever wonder what a widget was, those are those things up top, the temperature, and then this also has X mode. And the X mode is tuned specifically for the Wilderness Edition. And there's your three options. Normal, snow dirt, deep snow mud. I like the way they keep it simple. And then you're just gonna toggle back. I like having the temps. Uh, those are important things to look at. I throw it into reverse. 
Not the clearest backup camera, but I definitely have seen worse. It does have trajectory. I just wish it would take more of the room up on the screen. They do give you some real knobs for radio controls, and you can adjust the dual climate control very easily with buttons. Everything else, though, is done in this smaller area for the AC. The good news is, is that you could just tap. So one of the things I hate on a lot of cars is when you have to drag, because then you get greasy fingerprints everywhere. I just like a nice tap. It's easy to do when you're driving down the road. Down below, you have an aux jack, USB-C, USB-A, and a place for your iPhone 52. No wireless charging, though. That, to me, is a zonk. This is going to control your CVT. I do like the way they did the gold. Just a little bit of gloss black. Two cup holders. Nice, soft on the armrest with the stitching. And then watch this. You could actually open it up this way. And this is where you could keep like your driver's license. Maybe a picture of your first girlfriend or something like that. Or you pick up the whole thing. Uh, you have a 12 volt in here. And you could easily put, I would say, hmm, maybe six tacos. Nice hard shell. And two packages of the cinnamon twist curls. That's a good way to finish off your tacos. Seats. Subaru Wilderness badge stamped in there. That's worth an extra five horsepower. What's cool about these seats is that they're waterproof, easily cleanable. You do have, of course, power adjustments on the passenger. I have power adjustments on the driver's side. And you get a standard size sunroof is nice. But why don't you come over to the business end? I want to show you behind the steering wheel with the gold stitching in this Outback. All right, guys, business time behind the wheel. Nothing fancy, and I'm okay with that on the sill. You do have all your seat controls, especially that lower lumbar, which is nice. All the power seat controls. I'm six feet tall, and I love the space in here. It's, it's not too over-the-top space-wise, but it feels just right. Steering wheel, same thing. I like the leather all the way around. That gold stitching is really a nice touch. A little bit of gold on the wheel. Flat black on all the switch gear. It is a heated steering wheel. And you do have paddles to go through those simulated gears. It simulates an eight-speed automatic if you use the paddles for the CVT. And then I like the simplicity of the gauges. You have a nice large digital area in the center. And then, of course, you have your analog tag speedometer fuel gauge and cooling gauge, and I like the gold trim around the inner bezels in there, which is a nice touch. But other than that, very straightforward, very Outback-esque. Let's get into the back seat, though, and see if there's any benefits for your passengers if you go Outback over the Jeep. All right, guys, back seat time, and I'm telling you, in this lifted wagon, you're going to get a lot of great room in here. Like I said, a six feet tall, not even close to the headliner. I do have to give the award for the most back seat pockets ever in any car to the Outback, the Outback Wilderness. You have this major size one, easily put three Annie's and pretzels. You have a smaller one here where you could put uh, maybe like a Casio calculator or a Simon Says. And then you have this smaller one here, which is perfect for a couple of those little Debbie oatmeal uh, cream pie cookie things. Just keep them in there. That way, when you're out in the wilderness, you're never going to starve. And you got lots of calories from those things to keep you alive. As you come on in, you do have good size rear AC vents, two stages of heated seats, a USB-C and a USB-A. And then, like I said, the seats are comfy. They're very supportive. They're easy to clean, especially if your kid's back here and they ate one too many Annie Ann's pretzels and they puke all over the place. You can just clean it up real quick with some water. Um, maybe get some disinfected because uh, that's going to start to smell pretty bad in here. What doesn't smell is this armrest. It actually feels really good. Nicely cushioned. Two cup holders. It's a good size too. Jeez. But why don't we go ahead? Let's get in the cargo area because I want to see what this turbocharged Outback Wilderness feels like when we go on throttle. All right, guys, cargo area time. You're just going to hit the button. Nice electric assist on this Wilderness Edition. You're going to be greeted to a very generous 33 cubic feet of space in the cargo area with the rear seats up. I love the all-weather protection, even in the cargo area with the Subaru Wilderness badge. Looking good. That's worth an extra five horsepower, like I mentioned earlier. You have your Harman Kardon subwoofer. And then on both sides including the passenger side, you do have the handles 
that allow you to fold down the seats very easily. And we have a place where you could put your dog treats because think about it, in this back area, you could probably fit, I would say, three full-size German Shepherds or maybe 25, 26 Rat Terriers. Depends on what type of dog you have, but that's the thing I love about Subaru. They really take that into consideration. Even the low lift that you have to do to get into the back, the bumper is very low. That allows your dogs to get in and out very quickly, but you know what? I want to go ahead and adopt some dogs. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go on throttle in this Wilderness Edition Outback. All right, guys, we're inside this 2024 Subaru Outback Wilderness Edition, leaving Walker Ford. And right away, I love the support of the seats. The way everything is laid out is really well thought of. And if you haven't been in a Subaru in a very long time, you're gonna be blown away by the level of materials and fit and finish. We have that all-wheel drive, symmetrical all-wheel drive, keeping us planted 24 seven. And then with the turbocharged flat four boxer engine, you're getting plenty of, of pep. Zero to 60 in 5.7 seconds or so is actually quid, uh, pretty respectable for this kind of vehicle. We got our navigation. It's easy to get to the infotainment system. And like I said, working the blower fan is a lot easier with this setup than with a lot of other vehicles that I have driven. And then of course we got our dual climate control, very, very easy to operate. But seating position is great. The one thing that is a bummer is that you have to touch the screen to shut off that pesky auto start stop feature. So that's where that's located. If you're looking throughout the vehicle, it's right there on the screen. But visibility is fantastic. The eyesight technology, they really have shrunk. They shrunk in this whole device because it used to be a lot bulkier. Now they slimmed it up and they made it even better. And this technology, I'm telling you, it's award winning. Plus when it comes to the frame, this is a five star plus safety rating from the highway safety uh, council. So something to think about as well is that, you know, yes, you have the ability to go a little bit more off-roading. Yes, you have some pretty peppy acceleration, but you also have one really, really, really safe vehicle, which is nice. But pulling away from the light, smooth throttle application. I'm going to go on throttle. Here we go. On throttle. Remember, we have those simulated gears. What's nice about that, it feels like a traditional torque converter automatic transmission. It keeps the drone that you get sometimes with a CVT equipped car to a minimum. And the fact that you could use the paddles and have essentially an eight-speed automatic is a, is a nice variety that they've given you. And then with the CVT, it does give you better fuel economy than if this was a traditional eight-speed automatic. But the fact that we have plenty of room in the back seat, the cargo area, and everywhere else in between really flexes Subaru's muscle when it comes to knowing how to set up the storage areas. Plus, having the connectivity, which is nice too, especially for the backseat passengers. The one thing I'm missing is the wireless charging. That to me is the zonk in this vehicle. What I really like about driving this Outback Wilderness with those Yokohama Geolander tires, they don't produce a lot of extra road noise. Even though they're an off-road spec tire, more off-road spec than the standard Outback, you're not getting a bunch of tire noise, which is great, but you're gonna have that protection that you need and want when you do go off-roading. But as you can see, getting up to highway speed, it's very, very smooth, it's very comfortable, and they do a great job keeping the noise and vibration harshness out of the cabin. Now, of course, you are gonna get a little bit more wind noise because of those raised roof rails, but that's just to be expected, the compromise you make with this type of vehicle. But overall, this is that Swiss army knife that does so many things 
so very well. Obviously, like I said, from a safety standpoint, you got your eyesight technology, brakes feel good, and the overall, the balance of the vehicle is very, 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 very good. Very composed. We're gonna go on throttle here, you ready? On throttle, here we go. All wheel drive. <laughs> Look at this. So nice. The way that this thing handles in the twisties and how it corners, it really has that nice lower center of gravity because remember that flat four turbocharged engine sits lower in the frame. That gives us better handling, lower center of gravity, and they did a great job with the suspension in this Outback. It doesn't feel floaty, it's not bouncy, it doesn't feel like you're driving a marshmallow. It feels composed, it feels confident, but yet when the road gets rough, you'll have that flexibility with the suspension to where you're not gonna break anything. And it's not gonna be a super harsh ride. That's the magic that Subaru has brought to this Outback wilderness. But let me know your thoughts on this overall review with the Outback Wilderness. And, and when you look at the price point, especially compared to vehicles like um, the Jeep Compass Trailhawk, we're gonna get back to Walker Ford and wrap this one up. So I'll see you in a Subaru second. All right, guys, been another great day here at Walker Ford. Definitely gotta thank Frank Walker, Western Walker, Tracy, Mark the Gooch, and the rest of the crew getting us access to this 2024 Subaru Outback Wilderness Edition. Let me know in the comment section. Do you like what Subaru has done with this vehicle? Is it worth the price at the end of the day? Let me know down in that comment section. But if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile to come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Raised Rights family. We got to give it up to Stephen Flood, Stephen Flood Photography. He loves Subaru so much, he actually has a Subaru badge right on his tricep so that every time he flexes, the constellation actually moves back and forth. So very cool, Stephen. Show it off to everybody at your Subaru gatherings. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.